On today's show, the Yankees' ace had another stellar outing, but Nestor Cortez thinks he can be better. It's been a long and winding road, but Manny Banuelos was promoted. He's a Yankee. We'll talk about that. We'll also talk about Matt Carpenter being a Yankee and his snazzy mustache. And we have injury updates because they're happening now. All next on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Yankee fans. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias, and I'm joined by my co-host, Abby Mastrocco. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Odyssey, Apple, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also, hit the like button on our videos, and please comment... I've been trying to answer your comments, and I'm getting better at it. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Yankees. Abby? I'm back. Abby's and my back. voice is almost back. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm back from my West Coast Palm Springs bachelorette party sojourn. Um, I felt so bad because I was at a bachelorette party last weekend, lost my voice like just be all like it was obliterated it was like it it didn't hurt this like happens to me all the time um but then i was planning on spending monday and tuesday with my grandmother and wednesday with my uncle before i came back here and i did but it was like i could barely talk to my poor nana yeah i I have the same issue with mine yeah i have the same issue with my throat um i blame tino martinez and derek jeter game four of the 01 world series um I destroyed my voice that night to the point where I did I couldn't speak for five days. And when I say couldn't speak, like squeaking yeah. really bad. So now, even if I'm, say, out with friends at a bar and I have to talk a little louder because the music is loud, I will wake up the next day as if I were yelling for three days straight. It's just, yeah. I never went to a doctor for it. But yeah, that's the night that killed my voice. Thank you, Tina Martinez and Derek Jeter for making me lose my voice, but also providing me with one of the best baseball going experiences of my life. Cause it's still one of the best games I've ever been to. And it's 21 years later. So <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean, I just blame a dra- the drag show. So, <laughs> <sighs> you know, the next day, um, because of nine 11, everything was pushed back a week. So my friend and I had planned a trip to Wilmington, North Carolina, the week that the world series ended up being rescheduled for and day four was Halloween, fell on the night that we were going, uh, the day that we were originally going to drive to Wilmington. So we ob- obviously pushed it back a day. So we were driving down to Wilmington, wearing my Tina Martinez t-shirt proudly and, you know, Adidas track pants. I was just yankified going into the South, which is even funnier. And we stopped at this really cute place in Virginia on the way down for dinner or lunch or whatever the hell it was. I think it was lunch. Yeah. Cause we left pretty early. And this woman was like, oh, you know, we're watching the baseball game last night and, you know, we're, we're rooting for the Yankees and it's the only time we'll be rooting for the Yankees. And, you know, that, that was the whole joke throughout the South when we were going through it. It's like, this is the only time we'll be rooting for you guys ever. Um, and she said, you know, did you guys watch that game? And me with my demon voice said, we were there. And she was like, oh. <laughs> she's like, oh, my God. So, yeah. <laughs> now. If I were at last night's game, I don't know if I would have screamed, but I would have, well, I would have wooed, you know, woo for Nestor Cortez because I mean. Wooing is what got me into trouble. I I turned into a woo girl. No wooing. Woo girls. It's dangerous for your voice. It's dangerous for your vocal cords. Woo girls. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful at baseball games. Woo girls. Yeah. I'm always wooing. And yeah, that does, that does tend to bother my voice. Yeah. (laughs) But watching Nestor Cortez Jr. work is a pleasure. It really is. And the Yankees needed that performance from him because guys are dropping like flies in the bullpen. So the fact that he was able to go eight, um, I I understood kind of why Boone took him out when he did, but I was kind of hoping he would finish it. And I think Nestor was kind of hoping he would finish it. But, But that was 
you know, we keep joking, or we've I've been joking the whole season so far that he's the ace of the staff, but it's clear he's the he ace of the of staff. <laughs> He, here's the other thing about an ace is that it's somebody who sort of commands, he has a presence and like commands some authority and he is, Nestor has a presence up there mm -hmm. and guys in the clubhouse really react to him and respond to him. So like, I mean, yeah, maybe if you want to call him an ace, he's got like aura. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, he's amazing. He really is. And, you know, he... I won't say he was amped up last night, but I was looking at baseball savant and his numbers, the averages last night were up a tick for the cutter, the four seam and the slider. They were all up at least one mile an hour and the four seamer was up 1.7 miles an hour. So his average was 92.5 and his max he hit 94.1 a couple of times last night. So he was pretty amped oh, up during that game. Yeah. Um, I joked about it yesterday. I can't stand Tropicana Field. And I feel like the last few years, it's been a house of horrors for the Yankees. Like, they used to be able to go in there and beat up on the Rays. And now that the Rays are better, they don't have that same luxury. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't worried about Nestor. I was worried about the rest of the team. <laughs> <laughs> and just worried that shenanigans would happen in Tropicana Field. And so to have a game that was mostly relaxing to watch was very nice last night. Um, you know, seeing the Rays uncharacteristically with a couple of errors leading to Yankee runs and just, I mean, the series could still be bad because it's a four-game series, you know. So the Yankees could win the first one and lose the next three, but... For right now, it feels good. First game against Tampa, spoke about this yesterday. I was going through the schedule and how weird it's been where they've only played the Red Sox three times. They played the Orioles 13 times now, um, the Blue Jays nine times. So everything's backloaded with the Rays and the Red Sox in the second half of the season. And I was basically yelling at the schedule maker and wanting to know who did this because <laughs> what kind of a schedule is this? <laughs> you know, they've... They've got the second highest run differential. I think that just in like in the entire league, not just in the American League, in the entire league, only the Dodgers have a higher run differential. Mm -hmm. And if the Dodgers have a run differential of one of plus one fourteen, the Yankees have a run differential of plus seventy three. It everybody else is sort of I mean, at least like the big guys in the plus, like the in the plus column, uh, you know, Houston, LA, Angels, uh, Mets, like they're all in the 40s. Right. Yeah. I think that kind of speaks to the overall game that the Yankees are playing right now. 32 and 13 on May 27th. Coming into the season with all the complaints we had, we being me and yeah. other fans, um, complaining about moves that weren't made and moves that were made. And so far, yeah. I mean, it's working out well for them. And this week, <laughs> there have been some <laughs> injury problems, like a few, and even some in the lower levels that would affect us up here because Luis Heal has to have Tommy John. Chad Green has to have Tommy John. Um, one interesting thing that came out last night, Zach Britton is starting to throw. And he only had Tommy John in September. So I don't know how that's possible, but they're thinking he could be back by July or August, which would be unbelievable because that, the Yankees... That would be like absolutely unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he's doing it <laughs> because when they said he was down in Tampa with them, I'm like, how is that even possible? But apparently it is. Um, yeah, that would be a big boost because the bullpen needs it. And um, I joked yesterday that Clay Holmes should be the, the closer. When Aroldis Chapman comes back, I'm standing by that. <laughs> we like Clay Holmes on this podcast. Yes. Yes. We're, we're, we'll do a deep dive, too, because uh, he's just really... He changed his grip on two of his pitches, and it's changed him completely as a pitcher. And, you know, it's fun to see whenever they ask Aaron Boone about him, he just gets a wry smile on his face. It's like, yeah, he's pretty good. It's like, Yeah. <laughs> He's better than pretty good right now. He's his scoreless streak is 
over 20 innings. And, you know, the couple of hits he gave up the other night weren't really his fault. There was like a misplay in the outfield. And, you know, it was like no harm, no foul. Watching him close a game is so much more relaxing than watching Aroldis Chapman. Watching Clay Holmes close is like watching Nestor Cortez start. It's just kind of like, oh, this is nice. You know, like you're sitting in, like you're sitting in a hot tub with like a, you know, some sort of drink with an umbrella in it, relaxing, watching those two guys, you know, compared to watching, I would rather watch Nestor Cortez Jr. than uh, Garrett Cole right now. Really? Yeah. Is it the mustache? I think it is. Yeah. I think, I think it is. You know yeah. who else has a mustache? <laughs> Matt Carpenter? Oh, friend, Matt Carpenter. Yeah. That is quite a mustache. And it really is. I will say, um, I always joke about this. I can't tell white guys apart. And I really thought Mar <laughs> Matt Carpenter was someone else. Who do you so think he I, was? So when I saw him, I was like, oh, that's what Matt Carpenter looks like? Who was I conf I, I couldn't figure out who I was confusing him with. <laughs> yeah, that that's quite a mustache that that man has. Um <laughs> It's just like, I saw on Twitter a couple of people posted memes um with him next to like other people who have mustaches and my favorite one was Ron Swanson. Yeah, I saw a Freddie Mercury one too. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that one too. Yeah. <laughs> you should be Freddie Mercury for Halloween. That actually like I could I could see that. Yeah. I mean it's it's funny because um you know, when the Yankees lost the doubleheader to the White Sox, it felt like, uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> and lost the first game to the Orioles. They're like, oh boy, here we go. Okay, first three-game losing streak. Things are kind of falling apart here a little bit. But you were just thinking, well, things were going so well for the first month and a half of the season that it was bound to be like this. There's and then they ups and flows to a season. That's normal. Right. But the good thing is now they're back on a different streak. It didn't go more than three they're looking better even with all the different injuries that keep cropping up other guys are stepping up and you know helping out and yeah this is again it's a different feeling this year even with the injuries so i mean there's yes, always my... that feeling in the back of your mind yes it's gonna unravel yes but i think this large run differential shows you that this is not just a fluke and they're about to like come crashing down to earth right that's right. what that's run differential is an indicator of that. Right. It can yes. be not always, but typically it's a very yeah. good indicator of whether the team is going to be able to stay the course or not, especially around this time of year, because as of Tuesday, you can finally look at the standings. Baseball <laughs> fans. That's right. That's wait right. We're all Stacy. Yeah. yeah. Wait until Tuesday. Yeah. To, We're almost to, like glean anything from the standings. Yeah. Memorial day weekend. That is typically when you know whether a team is on the right path or on the wrong path. Granted, yeah. there are always collapses, that red, epic Red Sox collapse years ago. The Mets do it all the time, you know, like, although I don't think this, I, I think the Mets now, it's a very different situation, but, you know, there have been epic collapses. Right. They are fascinating to watch. It's like a train wreck in slow motion. <laughs> um, but... There's just nothing to glean from the standings this early in the game because you still like you still have teams who like they don't really know what their final rosters are, or they don't really know what like their peak roster looks like. Right. There's teams that are still going to rebuild like they could be doing really well. Last year, the Kansas City Royals were in first place after the first month of the season and the Royals were still in the middle of a rebuild, traded everybody away. And you know what? They by Memorial Day, they were sort of on the downswing and their run differential was ticking downwards. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Tuesday. You can look at the schedule and you can either be encouraged or you can panic. Yeah. And give all of you permission. Not that you need it. You've probably been doing it already because fans kind of get in their own heads about things anyway. But it's been a fun season so far. Like it's been an enjoyable season. We've seen some good baseball. Last year there were there were times where like man, it just felt like baseball just felt like a slog sometimes. Like I was covering hockey in the playoffs and I went over to I think it was at a Mets game. I was just there to like watch talk to some people that kind of thing because i had been sort of buried in hockey and it was like all right i need to like shift my focus a little bit um and i think it was ken davidoff from the post he was like man what a letdown it must be coming over here coming over here to watch baseball after watching playoff hockey the last few weeks he's like these games are just taking four hours yeah they're not very interesting 
nobody's putting the ball in play. <laughs> and it's I, I feel like we've had some more enjoyable games. This Yankees team is like firing on all cylinders. They've got good defense, pitching, you know, the from the bullpen and from the starters. They are finding ways to put up runs. It's not just relying on the home run ball like it was last year. I I I just think we've seen some more enjoyable baseball this year. Now, look, baseball still has its issues this year, namely the balls. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as some of the Yankees stuff goes, as far as the Yankees go, I'm having to watch a lot of games like replayed like the next day or two days later because I've got playoff hockey stuff going on. And there's a lot of times in past years where when I'm watching games, whether it be like Yankees games or other baseball games, I need to catch up on. Um, just for like certain storylines or certain plays that happen that I need to be able to break down for a story. Um, it just doesn't feel, I'm just kind of like watching and like forcing myself to pay attention. I just, I, I don't think I've really felt that watching replays this year. Yeah. Now, one thing before we go into segment two, Nestor Cortez is the first Yankee pitcher in Yankees history with an ERA below 1.75 and at least 60 strikeouts through his first nine games of a season. Our soft tossing boy. Ernest. So in a moment, we'll talk more about Nestor Cortez. We'll talk about um, another pitcher who's with the Yankees after a really long time. <laughs> like, he should have been here a decade ago, and he's here now, finally. It's like, wow, okay, this is so great. But first, okay. we've been asking, and Built Delivered, Built Granola Bars are here. They come in three unbelievable flavors, chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. And if you want to try all three flavors, you can get a mixed box at Built.com right now. They're different from the bars and the puffs, because they're loaded with granola, but it's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness. But just like the bars and puffs, they're covered in 100% real chocolate and they're packed with protein. They're also made with collagen protein, which makes your, no, fuck, hold on. And they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So if you've been waiting for a healthy and delicious granola bar to hit the market, this is your time. Again, head to Built.com to get the three flavors. Chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, white chocolate berry. Don't miss out. Get yours today. Use our promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order at Built.com. Again, Promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, where you get recaps of Major League Baseball games with analysis from our local experts who are taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So, Matt Carpenter is not the only person who was called up by the Yankees or promoted. Uh, Manny Banuelos. My Manny goodness. Manny Manuelos, what a story. Remember when Mariano Rivera said that Manny Manuelos was like the best pitching prospect he'd ever seen? Mm-hmm. Like, man, what a long road for him. I was trying to look back today and see, because I had to write about Manny Manuelos signing with Anaheim years ago. I was trying to look back and see if I still had the story that I wrote and like what the um, Angels director of hockey, op- or not hockey, op- baseball ops said. I can't find it though. It was like not really a ringing endorsement. It was very much like, we kind of want to see what he still has left in the tank type of thing. Mm. Yeah. Cause it was a minor league signing in the middle of the season, like pretty low risk, but I, yeah, I think with guys like that who were such, such highly touted prospects and who had such good stuff when they were young, people do kind of want to see if maybe their organization can be the one to like coax it out of them. Right. And the are really good at finding sort of these un undervalued pitching undervalued pitching prospects or maybe not prospects that's not even the term I'm looking for but like they're good at like finding a guy who might be struggling with another team and saying come over here I see this one pitch that you're throwing and I want you to throw this all the time and our pitching coaches from top to bottom bottom are going to work with you to get get like maximize this one pitch that you have or these two pitches that you have Clay Holmes is a perfect example of that he was non-tendered by the Pirates a couple years ago, you know? So I it, it's just such a wild story. It's like, I mean, he played in China. Like, he was 
he was the guy. He was supposed to be, he was supposed to be winning World Series for the Yankees. Yeah. He was supposed and to be the, the eight years ago. Right. And, you know, when you think of that group, because uh, I remember it very well, the Killer Bees, Andrew Brackman, Dylan Batances, Manny Banuelos. And the sweet thing about this is Banuelos is going to be wearing Dylan Batances' 68, which I think is very, I love that. And he spoke to Batances about it. And um, I just think after all this time, he's still young, relatively speaking, because he's 31. But this all happened so long ago. And to see him finally make it after all this time, um, you know, he was with Triple A Scranton in seven games. He made five starts in over 30 and two third innings. He had a 2.35 ERA. And, you know, anything that he can do to help the big club, because they're going to need help with all these guys dropping like flies with injuries, just to see him do it, even just seeing him on the mound is going to be so for the people who've been keeping track of him this whole time, this is going to be quite a moment. And I know it's going to be quite a moment for him. So I'm just, I love this so much. It's one of those, it has the potential to be one of those feel good stories that makes baseball so nice. <laughs> so when he was finally traded, when the Yankees finally were like, all right, we're done with them in 2015, January 1st, New Year's Day 2015. Do you know who he was traded for? Oof. Ooh. I'm trying to remember. 2015, 2015, wait. Um, New Year's Day 2015. So it wasn't over? even like a, mid a winter meetings trade. Right. Who came over in 2015? I can't think. Chase and Shreve and David Carpenter. Oh, that's right. That's right. Wow. I, that's like, that's, uh, I don't know, maybe because I have to write about this so much. Like, it's always sort of... Guys like this are always like the answer to a trivia question, you know, like mm -hmm. the people that you were traded for sort of your names are like consistently intertwined. Same with like if you were the top draft pick, you, you and like the top two other guys, like you, your names are always sort of intertwined. Like, yes, these were the top three draft picks in 2015, like that kind of thing. And when you're a name like this, you sort of bounced around and you were traded. Um, Shreve and Carpenter played Decent roles for the Yankees in the bullpen for a few years. Yeah, it's uh, you were you were talking about people who were attached to trades. My father was basically Baseball Reference before Baseball Reference existed. And if you named like a random player from the fifties, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, you know, he was a lefty and he was traded for this guy and this guy and he played." Here. And my brother and I would, <laughs> how how do you know all this? Like what, I. <laughs> I know some things, but there are some times where my brain is just, you know, but then as soon as the names are mentioned, I'm like, oh, that's right. And then this happened. And, yeah. So I couldn't remember that. Plus 2015 was kind of, um, there was only a few months after my dad passed away and I was kind of like not really paying attention to baseball stuff because um, it was just too hard for me to deal with. Um, but now that you mentioned, I'm like, oh, right. Jason Shreve. Now, wasn't it funny that the Yankees had a reliever named Chasen, and the Mets had a reliever named Chasen. And Chasen they were friends. They're both. They both played with Bryce Harper in junior college. <laughs> it's like in what? Vegas. Yeah, Chasen Bradford, right? Was the other one? Chasen Bradford, one yeah. of my he, one of the all time nicest baseball players I think I've ever dealt with. Honestly, like a very genuine person who like wants to see his teammates do well, like work super hard. Um, we've had like. Chase and Bradford and I have had some interesting conversations about just like life and society. And like, there's always a few because when you're around a team for that long, especially baseball, you're around like every day. Like, Glenn Sherlock, the, the um, Mets coach who's back for like a second term with the Mets. Um, Glenn Sherlock and I had like a conversation about global warming one day, like in the dugout. Like, you just start, you, you, you have so much dead time when you're a beat writer sometimes. Like, and it is like helpful to just talk to guys because it can lead to future stories and everything. Mm -hmm. And someone wants to join the show. Which one is that? This is Sweet Pea. Hi, Sweet Pea. <laughs> she was in the show yesterday too. So yeah, she <laughs> she's like, I want to come in. But it, I just I had really great conversations with Jason Bradford, and he would tell me stories about um, the that College of Southern Nevada team with Shreve and Bryce Harper. Yeah, I just, I I was like, wow, Chasen, that's kind of a cool name instead of and, Chase. And there's two of, apparently it's a popular name in Vegas. Yeah, like, okay, apparently. Um, cause, I mean, I always thought the Madison Bumgarner, Madison Bumgarner 
story was funny that there was a girl and a boy with the same <laughs> name, but two guys named Chasen who were friends and, yeah. you know, both pitchers and relievers in New York at the same time who knew each other. That's just, it's mind blowing to me. And then there was um, Paul Seawald who was with the Mets also, who's from Vegas and like Seawald and Bradford would always be talking about how great like the baseball scene is in Vegas and like it's an up and coming hotbed and you know, Bryce Harper is obviously evidence of that as well. But um, yeah, they would all like the three of them. I remember we were taking photos during a subway series in like 2017, I think. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I'm being distracted by a cat putting her tail on my face. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, as I said, I couldn't really remember who he was traded for us, but that's, yeah, it's just, what a road, a long winding road and he made it. And again, it did, this does have a chance to be something really cool for him. And, you know, I hope it is for the Yankees, you know, because, They've had a lot of instances lately where things have worked out with guys where they've taken a chance on someone. And I mean, look at Gio Urshela and he's doing good for the twins right now. Uh, you know, I like looking on Twitter because I have, you know, friends from all different fan bases and seeing them enjoying having Gio Urshela on the team is fun to watch. Uh, but he's one of those guys. Yeah, he's got him for nothing. And, you know, he came out and everyone was like, where the hell did this guy come from? Uh, so it would be great if that could happen with Manny Banuelos, just considering all the expectations that were thrown upon him. But they were all like that back then. You know, you had Jason Giambi talking about Phil Hughes, like, oh, he's the next Rocket. Yeah, don't put pressure on these 21-year-olds, like saying they're going to be know. the next Roger Clemens. <laughs> like, the don't thing do is that. that when you're – there's always comps. Right. When you're – in player development, you're always looking for the comps. And I don't think it's, I don't know why we always jump and look, not all scouts do this. Maybe this is just like a media thing or like a player thing, but like, or maybe it's just because we jump to like the most well-known comp, then they happen to be at like a, you know, a high level. Um, and maybe if you say like, oh yeah, he's just like a, he's a guy off the bench. Like he's a fifth outfielder. <laughs> like, you know, that's maybe not like, an, that's not a very flattering comp. Right. But that's the realistic one sometimes. Right. So, yeah, it's difficult to hear your – it's difficult – as a young player, you're going to hear your name like that, and you're going to start to believe, like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the next Roger Clemens. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the next whoever. I'm the next Mike Trout. And it can either be a lot of pressure for some young people or it can be sort of an ego builder, and it's – gonna come crashing down if you if you're not one of those generational talents and like they are very few and far between yeah it's unfortunate that we put so much pressure on them with these high-end comps but i i I think scouts are i mean talking to scouts they're a little bit more realistic about it probably a lot more realistic about it than even i am because i've talked to a lot of scouts who are like you know there's a team team x is like telling me like raving about this guy like oh he's he's fantastic he's he's amazing like he can hit a ball anywhere in the zone and like he's got all five tools and blah 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 and then a scout will be like "Mm, he's fine (laughs) his hit tool's not very high and you know he strikes out a lot and like he's fine so scouts are a lot more realistic about it than i think um the fans and media and the prognosticators and and some of the players too it's it's itself or themselves sound like because you're right there was a few years there where like all the yankees were comparing maybe it's just that like pinstripe aura where when you're in it when you're playing around such great players and you're like in the present like in the presence of history like you just you think that everybody is you use the hyperbole right you just feel that everybody's like everybody's fantastic everybody's phenomenal i don't know now i will say I wouldn't say I'm willing to bet my life, but I'm willing to bet my hair that you're never going to hear someone say, this guy's the next Mariano Rivera. (laughs) Because most people know there's never going to be another Mo. (laughs) No. No. (laughs) That's okay. Of course. There doesn't have to be a next somebody. Like, you know, Mike Trout's not the the next Babe Truth or Babe Ruth, Babe Truth. Huh. Um, <laughs> never been a good nickname for him. 
he's just my child. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with not having to, you don't have to be a, a next somebody. You can just be yourself and make a name for yourself. And like, yeah, you mm-hmm. don't, I don't know why we do this. I, I do understand why we do this with the comps, but it is sort of a necessary tool to under to help people understand like who this guy is, what kind of player he is, where he could fit potentially in the future. But some of the comps are just over the top and not everybody has to be the next so-and-so. In a moment, we're going to discuss injuries. We've been mentioning it throughout the show, but we're going to go through specifics because, uh, yeah, the the injury bug has hit the Yankees hard, um, but they haven't really missed a beat, which is good. Almost like a 2019 feeling in a way, but who knows, because that team was really, really good. Um, <laughs> our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. The Warriors are going to another finals. It had been, what, two years? There was a break there for two years. They're finally back. Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Uh, Injury time. It's injury time. When I had the show just audio before we had to go to YouTube, I used to play the ER theme the first like seven seconds of it to do my injury updates. And people always found that very funny, although it was all the time. I think I did injury updates at least four times a week. (laughs) Because it was just, it's just constant. So we mentioned Chad Green having to have Tommy John. DJ LeMayhew had a cortisone shot in his wrist. He said last night he was feeling better. Uh, He said it was the first day that he's really feeling better. And um, it's possible that you might see him tonight. Um, And if not tonight, maybe tomorrow. Aaron Hicks was a late scratch yesterday. Hamstring issue. Um... I mentioned Luis Heal, Tommy John, done for the year. And I didn't hear more about this, but last night, Davey Garcia left his game with Scranton with a trainer. He called for the trainer to come out and walked off the mound. So um, Connor Foley had tweeted about that last night, and um, I forgot to check up on that. But yeah, th- the guys are dropping like flies. And then you have Josh Donaldson with COVID. Joey Gallo had COVID. He came back. And um, it's just, it's all happened within the last, (laughs) within the last literal six days. And it just feels like everything was cruising along so well and then boom. But the Yankees haven't really missed a step with all these injuries yet. So, um, you know, if they can get guys to plug in and help out while the other guys are recovering from their injuries, great. But the, the whole Luis heel thing is... A bummer because he was one of those guys who you could use if something happened to someone else on the big club. He can do a spot start like J.P. Sears did the other night. And, you know, but you also have Clark Schmidt can do stuff like that. Um, They've been using him mainly out of the bullpen. uh, But, yeah, it's just when it rains, it pours for some reason with the Yankees and their injuries. Uh, I've wondered. I've been wondering if there's something some underlying injury issue with Davey Garcia because 10.38 ERA is, uh, yeah, not good. Mm -mm. He has been really struggling. Um, and he did last season too, but Oh, and three, 10.3. Like I, and granted, look, I haven't watched him pitch. I have not been able to watch him pitch. I I just wonder there if maybe there's been some sort of underlying issues. It, It just seems like, this is such a departure from what we saw a few years ago. Uh, the Yankees PR just put out a tweet 13 minutes ago. So at 4.06 p.m. Transferred Chad Green to the 60-day IL. Not surprising. But transferred Josh Donaldson from the COVID injured list to the 10-day injured list with right shoulder inflammation. Interesting. Oh, and I forgot okay. to mention Stanton and his calf also. So, Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot going on, injury-wise, with the Yankees. Um, oh, okay. 
Davey Garcia, he apparently lost feeling in his fingers when he was trying to throw his breaking balls, could throw fastballs, but for whatever reason, not the breaking balls. Removing him from the game sounded mostly precautionary, but they'll see how he feels tomorrow. That was 18 hours ago, and there's no update from Connor Foley. And he's the first, he was the one that reported it because he's the uh, Scranton beat writer. So, yeah. um, I mean, I know all about that because uh, sometimes I'm doing classes on my bike and all of a sudden I won't be able to feel the fingers on my left hand, but I think it's my sports bra is too tight on my my arm or whatever, and it's cutting off circulation to my fingers. Uh, at least I hope it is, and I hope it's not actually like an issue that I'm having. Uh, so I know it's very strange when you have that happen in your fingers. You're like, what is going on? Um, and we were talking before the show about the cortisone stuff because of... DJ LeMayhew getting a shot in his wrist. I've had one cortisone shot in my life. And I'm one of those people who I, well, I'm not a big fan of needles. Who's a big fan of needles, but <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of them. And I was watching her stick it. In, I was just, she's like, Oh, you know, you can look away if you want. I said, no, I'm fine. And I was watching her move it and everything. And she's like, the doctor was looking at me like, oh, what are you doing? And I said to Abby before the show that when you get a cortisone shot, at least in your knee, it really feels like you're wearing an ace bandage around your knee, except it's inside, inside. your knee. It's the I didn't weirdest have that same experience. I had to get a cortisone shot for my shoulder when I was in high school. It just felt it's like the consistency of Vaseline. So like you really feel it's very <laughs> slow moving, and it's so it's not pleasant. Mm -mm. I was supposed no. to get another one, and I never did. I ended up having surgery years later anyway, but. Yeah, I was supposed to get, I was supposed to do PT and all this other stuff, and I never did. I've had bad knees since uh, the year you were born, literally. Me? Um Yeah. Yeah. What year was I? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. God, I just forgot what year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, my knees have just been crap since then. So, uh, yeah. And I got to, if you've never had a cortisone shot, there is a thing called a cortisone flare that can happen. And it's this shooting awful it's the worst pain i've ever felt in my life it happened about two or three hours after i got the shot and i screamed so loud i scared every cat in my house and thank god i was home alone because you know i think my neighbors heard me and our houses are not that close together because it was the most pain i've ever felt in my life so i you know the the shot itself was fine and the way it made my knee feel was great but that flare woo so if any baseball players have had that happen in their arm or anywhere else they get cortisone shots oh woof mm. and you know you you hear about all these different things that guys do to um help with their injuries and PRP <sighs> injections yeah yeah oof mm, mm not fun um oh speaking of that because i know he did he have stuff like that done i'm trying to think um bartolo cologne is looking to make a comeback <laughs> yeah they have video of him throwing and i personally would love this only because bartolo cologne is older than me and if i could have someone back in the majors who's older than me that would make me feel so much better because my last my last guy the guy who left me ichiro was the last one <laughs> in the majors who was older than me. And when he left, I was like, oh my God. That's a true sign, people, of getting older. The game is getting younger. Like we forget because we've been fans of this our entire lives, but like, yeah. it's really weird that like 50 year old men are screaming at guys on the field and throwing trash and like throwing such a temper tantrum over 20 year old, 21 year old dudes who are playing a sport. Yeah. A million dollars it's a billion dollar industry <laughs> it, but at the same time it's um when you really like take a step back and think of it that way like the incident where they were throwing trash on the field and like um you know arguing with miles straw and cheering when uh, i forget his name kwan got hurt um yeah these were like 40 50 year old men who were acting like kids about a bunch of 21 year olds right Really weird. When you take a step back and you think about it, what's really weird? <laughs> I mean, it, like when you actually, yeah, when you think about it, like people walk around with sports jerseys on. I don't play baseball, but I'm, you know, I walk around with this on sometimes. Well, I wear this. Look, baseball jerseys are the weirdest because coaches have to wear them too. Yeah, it's yeah. basically like baseball jerseys are basically pajamas. Like, how funny would it be if a basketball coach was wearing a tank top and shorts? <laughs> 
<laughs> or like a hockey coach was wearing like pads and <laughs> the jersey and he was walking around in skates. Like that's basically what it's like. Like why I mean, they for practices? They're on the ice for practices, but like yeah, not for games. And right. Like, yeah. Or uh, football you coaches. Got Bill Belichick with the cutoff. Yeah. The one who's you look look. That's like the most football is actually like the most normal to me. Like. The fact that, like, in basketball and hockey, you have to wear a suit. Yeah, and that's like, also strange. Too. In European soccer, you have to wear a suit. But, like, football football coaches are just wearing, like, khakis and team gear, you know, like the Jim Harbaugh khakis. Docker, yeah. Whatever I mean, are. you have some of the coaches in baseball, the managers who have the hoodies now that they wear, but yeah. they still have to wear the pants. <laughs> the baseball uniforms, let's be honest, they're basically pajamas. Yeah. Yeah. Grown men chasing balls and hitting balls in pajamas. In pajamas. Yeah. It's great, and though. coach. And coaching in pajamas. It's so and weird. coaching in pajamas. That's like, yeah, that, that's strange. That's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees. Quarter retire. <laughs> <laughs> Which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Abby and I would like to remind you that you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, like and comment on YouTube. I'm answering your comments. That's the best of my ability. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Now make your second listen of the day, Locked On MLB. MLB, Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present, and it's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your weekend, and we will talk to you all Monday.